Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Pocket. Now, have you ever wanted to go hiking in Russia? Well, you won't after seeing this game. Let's go play Colat. Colat is a new atmospheric horror game from Polish developer IMGN Pro. And I gotta say, you Poles can't name gaming companies very well. IMGN Pro, CD Projekt Red, these are not catchy, memorable names. Regardless, I feel like getting creeped out, so let's play. 56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains. A group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Ototen Mountain. Great narration by Sean Bean, or as the uh, Steam page for the game calls him, famous Sean Bean. Just in case you thought it was like Sean Bean, your uncle, who's like a bricklayer. When their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered, deep under the snow. Alrighty. So it's based on a true story about skiers who sort of disappeared on a Russian mountain and ripped their tents open from the inside out and fled, and, uh, and they all died. So I wonder how this game's gonna wrap it up. This looks nice. This looks lovely. This actually looks real. This looks so much better than that cutscene. You should have opened with this. Just like a slow push through this world, rather than that sort of like Dilbert cartoon. <laughs> How am I already lost? I would not fare very well in Russia. I hope I have a backpack. I feel ill prepared for the journey that seems to be lying ahead of me. And now, because I'm, I'm just gonna spin around a bunch, spinning around a bunch, spinning around a bunch, totally disoriented, have no idea how to get back to that abandoned village that I was in. Ooh! Aha! Uh -huh. See? Are you coming to me? So this seems to be like a one-to-one -one time scale of what it's actually- WHOA! Hole! In the end, the only thing I saw was a flash. An insufferable burning light. The pain. Okay, this feels like the end for the famous Sean Bean. Oh, this is slower than those those movies you were in, Sean. Remember those movies? So we continue. Now I'm gonna break the fantasy of the, uh, of the game and just have myself a warm cup of joe. <laughs> well, I freeze to death. Oh, <gasps> I found something. John, stop paying attention again. I found something. It's a tent. It's a tent. It's got a heart. It's a heartbeat tent. Oh, yes. Press E. That's how you get intense. Really broke the atmosphere there, didn't you, game? Have you ever tried to hold on to your humanity? Yes, while I was just playing that part of your game. Uh, okay, so, flashlight? Don't really need it, do I? Seems like a full moon kind of night. Oh, I'm gonna get so lost. Oh, I'm already so lost. Where's my tent? Ah, <laughs> uh, I would make a terrible Boy Scout. Seriously, where the hell's my tent? It was just there, wasn't it? I swear it was just there. Is it there? I think it's here. It's gotta be here. There it is, okay, there it is. All right, whew. All right, I think uh, that's a good first day. Let's head back and go to sleep. Uh, no, no, push on. It was like nine people who got lost. So am I looking for these people? Maybe I'm looking for them. That would solve the problem of you will die in this game for sure. Ah, 37 NG. Uh, okay, so that's where I need to go. Yeah, should have read that map closer. 31, 2, 37, 52 east. So if there's a little craggy bit there, is it here? Damn it, Nick. You grew up in the country. How do you use a compass? I mean, I know that way's north, but that doesn't really help me to tell me where I am. <laughs> Okay, so there's a circle of those big craggy things, which looks to be there. What did I say? It was 37... Oh, 3762. Oh, it's in the middle. I misread the number. And the whole time I've been wandering around looking at old crappy Stonehenge here, old Russian Stonehenge, going, oh, it's somewhere over here. And I thought it was 52, it was 62. I read 52 there. All right. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna die in the wilderness one day. Let's go over here. 
I really like this map mechanic of sort of like hiding that map and finding out where you are with the coordinates and stuff and not knowing where you are on the map, having to sort of identify um, using landmarks. It's the thing people always complain about in games. It's like, oh, don't show me that line of where I'm going. <gasps> Red. What is this? It's weirdly scully. I set out the moment I heard about the incident. I was in the area, so I reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. Mm. What? No! All I did was read a man's diary! I'm sorry for invading your privacy! There's someone running away. There is someone running away. Where are you? You're gone. Oh, uh, that's weird. Okay, so am I someone looking for the expedition of like cops who looked for the survivors? Because I didn't stand there and read and uh, write that letter. I read that letter. Someone else wrote that letter. How many people are lost in this frigging mountain? Okay, so that's the first location on that map. Obviously I need to, ah good, and it's marked, it's at least said that that's been done. So I need to wander around and trigger each one of these sort of like weird stone ritual things that seem to release ghosts. I wonder if there are nine things here to trigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are nine spirits I need to let free or something. Okay, so what's that? That's seven, that's all the way up there. That's probably too far. Let's go 54 degrees north, 61 degrees east, which is behind me. And I take the left-hand trail behind me. Oh, the walking is so slow. I am really interested though in what's happening. I think it's just the, the frustration of getting to places. Uh, just the movement speed, I think, is the thing that's killing it for me, but I do, I do want to know why I need to find these places. Just trust the mainness of the path, Nick, because the last time you got confused, you kept noticing a giant rock structure and going, oh, that's nothing I should be paying attention to. See here, this is where the path splits. This is where the path splits. The snow is falling across the map. The weather is amazing. The weather is dynamic and interesting and so real to life, it feels freezing. And so far, not a loading screen. Like, everything here is... What? What? Oh... This is the... The hikers! Oh, there's something really eerie about the fact that these are real people. And now they've left me alone. I have no idea where I am. Okay, you just kept running, Nick. <laughs> okay, so I think we got to like here, and then I'm down here somewhere. I am so lost. Okay, let's try to find some landmarks. Okay, so, that's, I'm here. That looks like a pond like a frozen pond. So this is, it should be somewhere around here. Whoa. Well, I'm definitely on a path to somewhere. Hey, hey. Mysterious events in the sky were noted during the night of 4th to the 5th of July. Witnesses testified they'd seen a bright orange sphere which had crossed the sky above the city several times moving chaotically and immediately changing its direction of flight. I wonder. I'm up here? <laughs> I'm up here? I've been in the wrong location the whole time. Everything looks the f same in Russia. All right, well that seems like a good place to leave it for now because I feel like if I, if I try to get back to where I was before, uh, I'm just gonna get even more lost. This game is very interesting, if only that it's just showing me how little I know about cartography. Uh, the game is gorgeous, obviously. Uh, the weather effects are incredible. The atmosphere it builds is really, really nice. The central mystery is something that I am interested in. I do wanna know why I'm here, what's gonna happen to me at the end, and what happened to these people. Seeing those spirits sort of running through the forest, 
there's something very eerie about it because you know that they are representations of real people and this is more so than any sort of like Call of Duty war game, you know, World War II game where we play and we know that people were there. These spirits actually represent real people with actual names and there's something quite haunting about watching them and I feel a sense of responsibility to find out what happened, even though I know we don't know what happened so the game will never actually give me a proper answer. I'd read reviews online that said that the game was actually sort of really, really slow, but to me the slowness seems appropriate because it's building tension. You're not supposed to be superpowered, you're supposed to be a normal person. This map system. I really, really like this. It's very frustrating, but it's supposed to be frustrating, so I don't actually feel that frustrated by it. Me suddenly realizing that I'm actually like 500 meters away from where I thought that I was, looking in a completely different area, was sort of quite shocking to me, but also sort of reminds me, oh yeah, if I was actually here, this is probably totally what would happen. I have no idea how to survive in this scenario. Video games constantly teach us that we're superheroes. This game is reminding you that, no, you're just a person who's gonna get lost and freeze to death. And on that cheerful note, that's it for today's episode of Pocket. So Nick Boy, out. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if I was holding the map upside down the whole time as well.